This video is supported in part by Skillshare. In every crafter's home, there is a pile somewhere of unfinished projects, of old clothes waiting to be fixed, and thrifted clothes you meant to upcycle. Let's do something about it. Welcome to the style pile. Okay, uh, this video is gonna include some very awkward shots of my crotch. <laughs> I recently found this stripy bodysuit at the thrift store. Unfortunately, while the bodysuit fits me pretty well around my bust and it is my size on the size tag, it is far too long for me. Your girl has a short torso. So right now it looks <laughs> really, really bad. Anyway, although it's a bodysuit and it has snaps on the gusset, it was made of a swimsuit material, so I thought that I'd try and make it shorter so that it fits me nicely and also turn it into a swimsuit. So no gusset snaps. First off, I checked the fabric content to make sure it was suitable for me to take into the pool. I'm looking for nylon, polyester, elastane blends. And yep, 85% polyester, 15% elastane. That'll do fine for a swimsuit. I also made sure that it didn't go see-through when wet, or else they'd have to add a lining. Luckily, it stays totally opaque, because adding a lining would have been a pain in the butt. Also, this is a general upcycling tip. Before you upcycle a garment, examine it to see what stitches have been used throughout. Here, the seams have been overlocked with white thread, and the edges have been hemmed with a cover stitch machine, which you can emulate on a home sewing machine using something called a twin needle. More on that in a moment. First, I undid the snap buttons on the gusset, and I marked out a better length for the swimsuit by making some faint chalk lines on the swimsuit while wearing it, which I'm not showing you the footage of because it was a very undignified pose to do. To double check I had marked the correct spot, I folded the material where I'd made the chalk marks on the back and front, folded them together, right sides together, and clipped it in place to double check it. This is what the seam will look like when it's done. I then flipped the swimsuit inside out and I sewed across the line I'd marked out before with a basting stitch using a ballpoint needle. So ballpoint needles are the ones you want to use when sewing anything with stretch, elastic, particularly something like swimsuit material or a thin material because a regular universal sewing needle will make big holes in the fabric, whereas these won't. And a basting stitch is a long, usually temporary straight stitch and it's removed or sewn over later on. I'm using a basting stitch to triple check for the position. I really don't want to have to unpick the seam later because I'm worried about the stretchy fabric being too delicate to survive too many unpickings. So after doing the basting stitch, I tried it on for fit again. And now that I'm sure that I'm happy with the length, I cut off the excess fabric from the new seam and then I used a zigzag stitch across the same line from before and then an overlocking stitch on my sewing machine. I could have also used my overlocker, but I was being too lazy to get it out. And then I cut the rest of the excess fabric from the seam really close to the stitches, but making sure sure not to cut through the stitches. I was going to top stitch the seam to one side, but when I tried it on again, I realized that it was now far too wide at the gusset. It really looked bad. There was just far too much bunching at the crotch area. You'll have to trust me on that because there's no way I'm showing anybody the footage of me trying this on ever, but we will fix this. Eventually I decided that I would need to reshape the bottom of the swimsuit to make it better fitting. I wish I had done this before sewing that last seam while the front and back were separate, but I think I can still wing it. So to reduce the bulk around the crotch, I estimated the amount that I would need to remove and decided that I could just cut off the existing hems around both leg holes and then create new hems and that would remove approximately the amount of fabric I wanted. So here's me cutting off one of the hems and then I cut off the other. After cutting them both off, the fabric around each leg hole was left raw. Now I am going to hem the leg holes once again. I only wanted to fold it over once and then hem it or it'll end up a bit too much of a cheeky cut. So basically what I'm gonna do all the way around each leg hole is to flip the raw edge up inside the swimsuit about half an inch and then sew it into place. But because I'm sewing a delicate stretch fabric, I can't just throw this under a sewing machine and go around it with a straight stitch. Beginner's tip, you can't use straight stitches across stretch because the threads will snap when the fabric stretches. A bit of preparation needs to go into sewing stretchy fabrics like this. So this is what I did. 
First, I replaced my sewing machine needle with a twin stretch needle. Twin needles look like this and they can be useful for sewing stretch fabric. When set to a regular, straight stitch setting, they sew two neat lines like this on the right side of your fabric and they do a zigzag on the back of the fabric, making it a very suitable stretch stitch. Now, I had quite a lot of difficulty getting my twin needle right, as in this took an entire day to get correct. But I was determined because I have never quite had success using a twin needle and I really wanted to figure it out as they're so useful and they help create really professional looking garments. So here's some tips I picked up from a full day's research of twin needle sewing. You will use a normal straight stitch when you are sewing with your twin needle and make sure that your machine is suitable for a twin needle before you get one. You will need two spools of thread up top. They will be threaded together and then go through the two needles here. It's good to use polyester thread as it has a bit of extra stretch to it, especially so if sewing swimwear as other types of threads like cotton might degrade in pool chemicals. Thread the two upper threads at the same time, making sure that the presser foot is all the way up. Make sure that the spools are winding in opposite directions. One should be winding clockwise and the other counterclockwise. For the bobbin, use a woolly nylon. This thread has stretch to it, which helps a lot. Make sure you're using the right type of twin needles. So that'll be stretch or ballpoint for stretch fabrics and standard or universal for woven, non-stretchy fabrics. The width is also important. If your fabric is thin, you should use a narrower width twin needle. A thicker fabric, like a heavier knit, for example, will generally need a wider width twin needle. Okay, now onto the next step, preparing the fabric. Prepare the fabric to be sewed by stabilizing the edge if you can. Either overlock around the edge or for really slippery or thin fabrics, of which my swimsuit here is a bit of both, use some kind of interfacing or iron-on stabilizer. I just used a regular weight stretch iron-on interfacing. I cut it into long strips, the width of the hem that I wanted, which is half an inch, and then ironed the hem into place with the interfacing strips between the fabric's fold. Even if you're not using interfacing, you should still prepare the hem by ironing it into place before sewing because you're going to sew with the right side of the fabric facing you. Then you should test the twin needle on the same fabric or a very similar fabric to the one you're using to make sure that your settings are right. If you're getting tunneling or the needle is falling out or breaking like one of mine did when I jumped in too quickly or other problems like skip stitches, then you probably need to adjust the machine tension. Because I was getting tunneling, I turned my upper tension down all the way to one and I also loosened my bobbins tension as well. I did that by removing the bobbin case from the machine and you see this little screw here? It's very, very little and it has a little, little screwdriver for it too. I twisted the screw a few times to the left to make it a little bit looser. Also, because I was really worried about messing up my bobbin forever, I counted how many turns I did with my screwdriver so I could put it back to normal later on. Lastly, I lengthened the stitch a bit as well from 2.5 to 3. I also removed the work table from the machine so I could slip the leg hole around this part and sew in a loop more easily. And it worked! <laughs> I went all the way around both leg holes with my twin needle going fairly slowly, making sure not to stretch the fabric as I went with my needle set at one quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. <sighs> Okay, I hope that all of my researching and all of these twin needle tips will be helpful to someone out there. I didn't top stitch over the new gusset seam before to hold it in place because I made sure to fold it up and when I used my twin needle, I sewed over the edges of it, which is now effectively doing the same thing, holding that seam in place. Finally, I tried the swimsuit on again. It was finally looking normal at the crotchal area, but I just wanted to bring it in at the sides a bit where it's still a little bit loose on my hips and my waist. So I laid the swimsuit suit out flat again, inside out, and then I drew two chalk lines here and here, the same length and the same distance out from the edges on both sides. I sewed a basting stitch along both, tried it on to make sure it was right, and when I was happy with the fit, I overlocked, also known as serge, over both basting lines with my overlocker. And yeah, that was it. So how did it turn out? This swimsuit turned out so well. Perfect for a trip to the beach. 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I gotta stay indoors and edit this video now. Learning is something that I'm super passionate about and so is the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare. Don't know what gift to get someone for the holiday season? How about giving them the gift of learning instead of last minute panic buying them some plastic crap that they'll use twice and then throw away. Or you could quickly learn how to make your loved one something using skills on Skillshare, whether it be anything from writing them a song to making an animated gif saying, Merry Holidays. Well, Skillshare is the place where you can do just that. And you can have two months free on me if you are one of the first 500 people to click the link in the description box below. And then you can sign up totally risk-free if you or the person that you're getting the Skillshare gift for don't like it, then you can cancel at any time. But you won't want to because with Skillshare, you can learn one or two or many new skills from a wide range of topics, including illustration, animation, film production, photography, music production, crochet, knitting, learning how to do social media for business, or even the ins and outs of running your own business. That's just the tip of the iceberg and everything you need to learn those new skills is all in the one place. Learning a new skill opens up all kinds of new opportunities. And using Skillshare, you don't have to pay a fortune to learn. It's affordable, it's flexible, and you can learn these new skills from anywhere. So click the link in the description for two free months of the premium membership, giving you access to all the videos on the Skillshare site. For the first 500 people who click it, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you to everyone who supports the companies that support my channel. Okay, one more thing before I go. I uploaded a video on how to make a dog scarves and a lot of you didn't seem to see it. I did a premiere and that seemed to mess everything up. Trying out new YouTube features, they don't work. Oh well. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. It's the beginning of a new series that I'm very excited about and have already filmed a bunch more of. Just gotta get on to editing them. I'm really excited for you all to see them though. I think that it's going to be a really fun series. Also, I am sorry, not sorry, if this uh, video made those of you in the Northern Hemisphere pine for summer. <laughs> but hey, I had to watch you all six months ago cavorting about in the sunshine and I was very jealous then, so it's payback time. Cause that's how the rotation of the earth around the sun works. All right, bye for now. <laughs> Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon and Coffee for making this video possible. To support these videos so that I can keep on making them, go to cohofenfi.com forward slash Annika Victoria for a one-off donation, or to support me on a continual basis, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria. Even if you can only give $1 a month, that is extremely helpful to ensure this channel keeps running.